Welcome to episode 21 of a continuing series of operations videos on the Burlington Northern Model Railroad set in the Seattle region in 1973. Hi, I'm your host, Burr Stewart, and today we're just going to take a relaxing session to celebrate a new NP switcher that my friend Tim Taylor recently re-lettered and renumbered so that it fits in the Burlington Northern era of 1973. We'll also keep exercising those F units that we've been enjoying recently. But this will be a short, relaxed video, not too stressful, so I hope you'll enjoy it. This switch engine here, BN number 187, started out as NP number 128, which was a recent release from the Rapido company. The caboose is a recent release from Ed Austin's North Bank Lines. We'll be switching today in Everett, Washington's Bayside Yard. But before we do, let's just take a close-up look at the decaling that Tim did on this locomotive, based on a 1973 photograph we found. On the right side of the cab, we have the engine number without the BN reporting marks. Then we have the ACI label under the P in Pacific, and we have the engine number as well as the BN on the front hood. On the left side of the cab, for some reason, the BN letters were included below the number, and then the same sequence of numbers and letters occur near the headlight at the top. Tim did a really nice job on this, don't you think? All right, let's get back to the video action now. Do you remember that brace of F units that I've been obsessed with over the last few videos? Well, we saw them come back into position by the Everett passenger station with all the swing dancers there in the last video. And you may have noticed that there was a caboose on the end of the cut which clearly needs to be removed and put in the caboose track, which is right behind the station. So I thought, what a great opportunity to exercise this new and gorgeous SW1200. We got the rotating beacon on. The horn seems to be working. So now we're going to go and sidle up to that caboose. That station in the background is an unfinished old fine scale miniatures freight house station kit which you can still buy today at swap meets and my friend Andy Dupree started building it back in about 1969 and we're parking it here on the layout until we get a chance to finish it. I wonder what century that'll be. Meanwhile as you can see we've hooked up to our caboose and I had previously delayed the couplers on the F unit so that we could just pull the caboose right out of there. And now we're going to flip the switch and set the caboose out on the caboose track right behind the F units. It took quite a while for the Burlington Northern to repaint all their locomotives and cabooses. And while they did renumber the locomotives to the new numbering scheme, very early in the merger, which took place in 1970, some of the cabooses were not renumbered or repainted until several years later. So this NP caboose is a good example where it's still retaining its NP Northern Pacific number, even though it's three years into the merger by 1973. Getting accurate information about this sort of thing can be difficult since it was 50 years ago, but Ed Austin recently published a book on the Burlington Northern in Washington State, which included a photograph of an old SP&S caboose with its uh, original number that he took in 1973. Well, we've left our caboose on the caboose track, and it seems a little too early to quit for the day, so why don't we go and showcase another beautiful new piece of rolling stock on the layout. 
In this case, it's a new Exact Rail Southern Pacific wood ship gondola car. We'll go over there and grab it and haul it over to the right closer to the Scott Paper Company. Bang! Not too bad a landing, considering I'm operating two cameras and a switch engine at the same time. And this may explain why my videos have so many mistakes in them. But seriously, isn't that a beautiful freight car? You might ask, what's the Southern Pacific doing hauling wood chips up in Everett, Washington? But during the early 70s, the Milwaukee Road and the Southern Pacific had quite an alliance and exchanged equipment a lot more than they had been previously because one of the conditions of the Burlington Northern merger was giving Milwaukee access to Portland, Oregon from Seattle. And this allowed the Southern Pacific to shortcut some of the revenue that had been previously going to the Great Northern and the Burlington Northern along the inside gateway. So the bottom line is you might have seen those cars north of Seattle. Well, let's try one last time to see if we can get these F units out of Everett. I know I keep bringing them in and taking them out, bringing them in, but at some point this obsession just has to run its course. So hopefully in the next video you won't have to put up with this. But personally, seeing eight or 9,000 horsepower like this all lashed up together I don't know, it does get my juices flowing. These engines all have Tsunami decoders that have a feature called pitch shift, and I've set the pitch shift to different values in each one of them, so there's a lot of feedback going on between the sound in each of the units. Uh-oh! There were standing cars in that track. If this had been a real railroad, that probably would have caused a derailment and an explosion and a hazardous mat incident. Hopefully I won't get fired over it, but I guess this means we're not getting our F units out of town yet. Oh well, another time. This has been Burr Stewart. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I wish you much fun with trains.